Welcome to this, the latest installment in a series of educational and instructional videos from PBT. Today, we'll be talking about the proper installation of remote monitoring sensors on 2-volt, high-capacity lead-acid stationary batteries. The first consideration when working around any battery is safety. Only fully trained personnel should attempt to install PBT sensors on a string of batteries. Please understand and follow all safety procedures and practices before attempting sensor installation. Installation of PBT sensors on 2-volt high-capacity cells have different requirements than sensor installations on 12-volt monoblocks. PBT's co-founder, Walt Wolzuski. Thanks, Paul. 12-volt monoblocks have a relatively high internal resistance when compared with 2-volt high-capacity cells. 12-volt monoblocks have an internal resistance in the single milliohm or thousands of an ohm range. 2-volt high-capacity cells range in the hundreds of microohms or hundreds of millionths of an ohm. Our sensor is in effect a highly precise impedance meter. Installing sensors on high-capacity 2-volt cells requires a good mechanical connection, a very clean connection between the sensor and strap, proper torque. These connection attributes determine the sensor's ability to make accurate admittance or internal impedance measurements. Installers should spend the time required to properly prepare the connection positioning, cleaning, and determining torque specifications. They can then verify the results by using a handheld meter, Medtronics or other device, and can calibrate out any stray resistances. Stray resistances occur between the strap and sensor and strap and post. Cleaning and proper torque will eliminate much of this stray resistance. By making a reading with a handheld meter on the post directly and calibrating the sensor, via the controller web page, the remaining stray resistance will be effectively nominalized. Today's installation is focused on mounting a PBT sensor on an individual 2-volt cell. Consistent sensor placement is a key consideration. On a 6-post cell, for instance, we can attach the sensor's terminal ends to the cell in different configurations. Take note, manufacturers sometimes specify which post should be used for measurements. Whichever you use, be consistent throughout the string and throughout all your installations. Sensors should be placed on top of the strap, but under the bolt head and washers. There are two important labels on the outside of the individual sensor package. The label on the end describes the sensor and the sensor bracket type. Make sure the sensor label matches the application for which you intend to use it. The long label on the other side of the box provides important information for preventing damage to the sensor during installation. Before starting installation, determine torque specifications for the jar model. Most battery manufacturers place labels with torque specifications on the battery itself, and it can also be found on the battery data sheets. Use only insulated tools and have necessary tools handy before starting installation. Loosen the bolt on the negative post. Clean connection of NOx, dirt, and corrosion, even if it looks clean, using scott Bright or other non-abrasive material. Keep the plastic covering for the ring terminal on until ready to install the positive post Place the sensor bracket on top of the strap, but below the first washer and locking washer. Tighten and torque the connection with a calibrated torque wrench. Loosen the bolt on the positive jar terminal and remove the bolts and washers from the strap. Remove the plastic ring terminal cover from the end of the sensor wire. Remember, it is important to clean the connection of NOx, dirt, and corrosion, even if it looks clean. Connect the battery sensor's positive ring terminal lug to the positive post of the jar above the strap but below the flat and locking washer. Tighten with torque wrench to the specified torque setting. Once a small number of sensors have been installed, make admittance readings. If any readings are too low, reclean and torque the connection. 
This may have to be repeated more than once. Here's a measurement from an improperly connected sensor. Here is an example of a measurement from a dirty connection. This is an example of a measurement from a good connection. This concludes our discussion on the proper installation of PVT sensors on high-capacity 2-volt cells.